Parade. China's famed inland capital city, Nanking, presents a terrible picture of fear, confusion, and devastation as thousands of natives and foreigners flee from the terrors of war. Here, Japan's undeclared war of blood and hate reaches its fiercest intensity. Here, thousands of innocent non-combatants, men, women, and children, were wounded, maimed, and killed by the torrential downpour of the invading army's rain of fire and steel. In the once peaceful harbor of this colorful oriental city, the United States gunboat Penney casts anchor to perform an errand of mercy to protect Americans and other foreigners who can no longer, with safety, remain in a bombed and machine gun riddled Nanking. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander James J. Hughes, anxious for the safety of his people and all others ashore, rushes his tenders to the mainland to carry out the rescue work assigned him in the Yangtze patrol. His anxiety is caused by an artillery shell which burst not 400 yards away from the Panay. Here, the courageous staff of the American Embassy and other foreigners are forced to flee for their lives as the invading armies hourly increase the intensity of their attack. The commander of the USS Panay offers a welcome haven to citizens of the United States, Great Britain, and Italy, who can no longer withstand the horror and the suffering of a war in which they are not concerned. Eagerly they board the vessel, joyful in the thought of safety, but unheedful of the tragedy that is to turn their happiness into sorrow. The gallant little American naval ship Panay is intent only upon protecting lives. The Panay's heroic crew, serving in the best traditions of the American Navy, Man the vessel through dangerous, war-riddled waters of the Yang Sea only on an errand of mercy. A signal to Britain's gunboat Ladybird here on a similar errand, then last farewell to China's capital city. With American Commander Hughes at the helm, and with a pre-arranged convoy of merchant vessels and other naval craft, the Panay cautiously proceeds for five miles along the Yangtze River. Suddenly, the amazed and relatively defenseless crew and passengers behold and hear a shot, a shot heard round the world. The Pan A is bombed. Japanese airmen cast missiles of death and destruction again and again. From the skies they descend, and into the heavens they go, only to descend again and increase the intensity of the fury of their destruction. Helpless people, unprepared, unwarned, flee the mercy ship. A few take refuge from Japan's guns in lifeboats. Others swim to the desolate shores of the Yangtze. The shot heard round the world, unannounced, carries its fatal message of death. The deed swiftly executed with equal swiftness brings its terrible toll. 
Japanese planes go into power dives. Bombs strike, leaving devastation and wreckage. The planes attack in relays of two and three each. To add to the din of the bursting bombs, the riddle of machine guns rends the air as a Japanese launch helps the survivors' lifeboats. As the American naval ship Panay slowly sinks in the muddy waters of the Yangtze, its 72 amazed refugees hide on the shores of the river to escape further missiles of death from Japan's airmen still patrolling the skies. Wounded attend wounded. Heroes in agony become greater heroes to those who are beyond help. The Panay is badly hurt. Bombs have rent her seams and torn her superstructure. The maimed and wounded survivors find refuge in the tall reeds of the mainland. Slowly but surely, the yellow waters of the Yangtze fill the hull of the once proud craft. Slowly, the Panay meets its inevitable fate. The United States gunboat lists heavily and sinks with colors flying. weak are made stronger and the strong made to endure. Here in this barren and relatively uninhabited land, they look with longing eyes and hopeful hearts for rescue. Here the limited facilities of a tiny village are placed at the disposal of the Panay's hero. Chinese doctors administer first aid eager to relieve pain and suffering. Then follow hours of agony, anguish, and exposure. The helpless victims, tired and sick, are carried aboard rescue ships to commence the first lap of the sad journey to Shanghai. The tragic message is whirled over the Pacific to the nation's capital. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, deeply shocked and concerned, directs United States Secretary of State Cordell Hull to demand facts immediately from Japan's ambassador. Ambassador Saito replies. I have today called upon the Secretary of State, Mr. Cordell Hull, to express the Japanese regret. The Japanese government and people wish to express their profoundest regret to the American government and people on account of this deplorable incident. A funeral convoy of British and American ships awaits the heroic dead. Scars torn by bursting shells tell the story of the force of Japanese fire. The Panay's survivors and those who died finally reached the USS Augusta, flagship of the American fleet in Asiatic waters. All peace-loving people throughout the world are hopeful that never again will an incident similar to the bombing of the Panay occur in Asiatic waters or any other place.